Hi guys, it's Mac Million within the darkroom with Mac Photos. Thanks for stopping by and joining me for another episode where today's episode is going to be a bit of a rant. I've had a recent Adobe Photoshop fail that led me to uh, discover a new program by the name of Affinity Photo that I'll be sharing with you. So with no further ado, let's take a look. So before we take a look at Affinity Photo, I just wanted to give you kind of the backstory here as far as what's going on with my Adobe Creative Cloud account. Before leaving for Panama City for a week of a calendar shoot, the Friday before leaving, I noticed that all of my applications had reverted to being trial versions. After getting back from Panama City, I arrived back on a Saturday evening. On Sunday, I contacted Adobe via their online chat service. I was told that within two days, someone from Adobe would be contacting me to get this issue resolved. I didn't hear anything back by Monday, so what I did was phoned into Adobe, their support systems. Of course, um, I was connected with a technician who uh, got access to my system. He went through, he uninstalled everything, reinstalled, uh, went through some other uh, options on my computer, but was unable to resolve the issue. He determined that the issue was related to my Adobe CC ID. Well, I've had this ID for years. I've had this ID uh, functioning with Creative Cloud since Adobe began uh, utilizing this subscription, and I've never had an issue. Anyway, I was kind of put off. The technician disconnected without giving me any further instructions or when Adobe would be following up. That was on Monday. On Tuesday, there again, I had not received an email, no phone call, no follow-up. I phoned back into Adobe. I was connected with a different technician on Tuesday. There again, he went through the same or similar process as far as uninstall, installing. Uh, there again, I had already informed him that this apparently was an ID issue. At the end of his efforts, he informed me that they were working on this in the background and that the issue should be resolved and that I should be hearing back from Adobe within 48 hours. We're at Saturday. I've received no email, no uh, follow-up phone calls, no further instructions regarding uh, this issue being resolved at this point, I'm just thoroughly disappointed uh, with uh, the customer service that I've uh, received or I have not received from Adobe. Hi guys, so here we are over in Affinity Photo, where today I'm going to give you just a general overview of the application. As you can see, it's a beautifully designed user interface here, very similar to Photoshop. If you're used to working in Photoshop, um, the learning curve for this application is not very steep at all. Uh, you can pretty much get right into this application and uh, get going. The functionality, your shortcuts that you're familiar with in Photoshop are basically the same here in Affinity Photo. As we look to the left here, you will see your tools. The tools may have somewhat different names, but uh, the functionality of the tools uh, work the same as they do in Photoshop. To the right here, again at the top, uh, we have our histograms, uh, colors, swatches, and brushes. Your brushes are customizable and you are able to design, save, and store those uh, brushes the same as you would in Photoshop. Underneath is where we'll find our layers palette here. To the left of the layers are our adjustments. 
There again, the same adjustments uh, that we would find in Photoshop, you will find here in Affinity Photo. You now, these adjustments might have somewhat of a different name. For example, uh, for the hue and saturation in Photoshop, it's referred to as HSL adjustment here in Affinity Photo. We have our effects. There are blurs, uh, overlay styles, stock, so forth, uh, things we may not use so much. Uh, as we look at our layers here, let's go ahead and delete that HSL layer. We have the ability, the same as in Photoshop, to adjust our opacities. As far as our blending modes, uh, you're going to find basically the same blending modes that we would find in Photoshop. They are the normal dark and dark in color, our light and screen, overlay soft light, and so forth. So we'll find those same blending uh, modes here as well. Now, with Affinity Photo, uh, as with all applications, Photoshop included, there's always uh, pros and cons. But the more I use this application, the more pros I'm really finding to it. And the cons that I'm finding are very minute. And they're more related to uh, maybe some of the um, export times. Or um, I use Capture One as my front end interface. And I'm used to there being um, me being able to go back and forth between Capture One and Photoshop and saving adjustments in Photoshop and those appearing in Capture One. With Affinity Photo, the only real con I've found so far in that process is I am able to go and do my edits in Affinity Photo, save it, go back to Capture One, and if I find another adjustment that maybe I need to make in Affinity Photo, um, Saving it the second time, uh, there seems to be a little quirk there, but I am able to export the image, but I have to go back and retrieve uh, the image from Capture One. So that that's a little quirk there, but there is a workaround for that uh, quirk. But there again, the pros here, uh, the benefits here in Affinity Photo, I'm really liking the more I use this application, I'm really becoming fond of it. One of the things that I absolutely love about this program is you all know how uh, big I am with uh, using frequency separation. Uh, for photo editing, that is my go-to uh, function with photo editing. Now, what Affinity Photo has done is they have incorporated frequency separation into their program. If we go here to the filters layer, you'll see uh, one of the first filters they have here is frequency separation. Now, I've already opened uh, frequency separation up since I've been working on this image, but what it does is it already, uh, once you click on frequency separation, it opens a window. It gives you an opportunity to make some adjustments there, but it basically creates your high frequency and low frequency layers. So you're immediately able to start uh, working on editing with those frequency separation layers, which I absolutely love that. For you all that have followed me, you know that I absolutely love frequency separation. I've created frequency separation and skin retouching actions for Photoshop uh, that uh, I've made available for download. But there again, here in Affinity Photo, it's incorporated into the program here. As well, we will find, uh, you know, very accessible functionality here. Uh, at the top here, if we go to the right of what's called the photo persona, we'll find our liquify persona. There again, this provides us the same liquify functionality that you're used to 
there in Photoshop and I absolutely love the functionality of it here it's uh, very smooth you're able to go in and make adjustments to your brushes and tweak the sensitivity it shows a grid here you can opt to show or hide that grid when making adjustments here and as soon as you click back out it gives you the option to apply and your liquify functions are done very smooth it's not clunky not quirky at all so that was a big issue in transitioning to uh, a new program or a program different from photoshop it, it had to work real time it, it, it couldn't be clunky or cumbersome to use and I can tell you this application it's beautiful I, I love it I love the layout of it the more I use it the more in love I'm becoming with it I pay uh, 49 99 a month for my Adobe uh, CC subscription of course I have uh, access to not only Photoshop uh, but Lightroom, Lightroom I don't use. I transitioned to Capture One over a year and a half ago. I do use uh, Adobe Premiere for my uh, video editing. I as well use Adobe After Effects. Other than that, um, there again, my main applications being uh, Photoshop, uh, Adobe Premiere, and Adobe After Effects being put in the situation I, I've been put in this application is, is truly probably going to become my primary photo editing application um, I still have definitely the need for uh, Premiere and After Effects but I'm loving Affinity Photo I hope this maybe gives you all some insight. This is a program that I've seen previously, but until I was put in this uh, situation I faced over the past week where my Photoshop CC subscription, somehow my ID is all twisted and I don't have full access to it. I was really put in a situation where I was forced to look at other options because I have tons of work sitting here that needs to uh, get done. Thank you Affinity Photo. You have provided more than a viable option for me, but you might just be my uh, primary photo editing software. Well, as usual, I hope this episode proves to be beneficial to you, and I hope that my Adobe Photoshop fail proves to be an asset not only to me, but to you as well. Until the next time, get out there, get shooting, and remember, Make every shot count.